Hello again. I have spoken a number of times about the very weird idea that Britain was crying out for immigrants from the West Indies to come to this country and help rebuild it after the end of the Second World War. I have dealt before with various aspects of this fairy tale, but the one which is always raised is of course the claim that London transport was so desperate for workers after the end of the war in 1945 that they were forced to appeal to the West Indies for recruits. Thus, in the post-war years, immigrants from the Caribbean were crucial in saving London's transport system, something for which we should be grateful. The only problem with this story is that it is completely and utterly false, a fact acknowledged not only by London transport themselves, but also by such progressive and right-on organisations as the Runnymede Trust. It is from these two sources that I shall be quoting, and in the description to this video I give links to the documents upon which I am drawing. The standard narrative is that Britain was in ruins at the end of the war and suffering from a terrible shortage of manpower. This meant that there were not enough people to drive the buses in London, for instance, and that London transport was compelled to turn to the West Indies for staff. Here is what actually happened. It is perfectly true that there were some difficulties in recruiting enough bus drivers in the late 1940s, but this was only in London. There were area, there was full employment in London, but there were areas of Britain where there was higher unemployment. When London Transport advertised further afield in the north of England, Scotland and then Ireland, they soon managed to find enough people. By 1955, that is to say 10 years after the end of the war, the situation had stabilised. There was by this time less demand for buses anyway, due to the rise in private cars, which was beginning to take hold at that time. London Transport had certainly never considered recruiting drivers or conductors from the West Indies. Some countries of the Caribbean, though, were by this time in terrible difficulties. Unemployment had reached very high levels, and this was causing social unrest, with the threat of political violence looming. It was, of course, unemployment and poverty which had driven the first Caribbeans to seek their fortunes in Britain in 1948. There was great anxiety, particularly in Barbados, that if something were not done to relieve the situation, then there could be serious trouble. So it was that in 1955, the government of Barbados contacted London Transport and suggested that they might come and take some of the unemployed men there to Britain. So eager was the government in Barbados to do this that they offered to pay the fares of the men so that they could leave the country. The Runnymede Trust is a very left-wing organisation which works for the interest of black people and on their website we find the following. Concerned with rising unemployment in Barbados, the Barbadian government eventually approached London Transport to set up a formal arrangement for recruitment. In 1956, London Transport became the first organisation to operate a scheme recruiting staff directly from the Caribbean. I give a link to a document which was published by London Transport to celebrate Windrush Day as well. It reads as follows. In 1956, the Barbados government invited London Transport to start direct recruitment. The fares for passage to the UK were covered by the Barbados government loans. Recruits had to pay the money back over two years from their London Transport wages. Here then is the truth about West Indians working for London Transport after the end of the war. They did not start doing so until 10 years after the end of the war. It was not that we in this country asked them to come here and take jobs. 
It is rather that the countries of the Caribbean initiated the progress, not for Britain's benefit, but rather for the benefit of their own economies and in order to solve a troublesome problem. This is why it was that the government of Barbados advanced the money to pay for the fares of those who might wish to leave Barbados and come to this country. They wanted to get rid of them. This puts a completely different slant, of course, upon what has now become the accepted story of immigration from the Caribbean in the post-war years. Rather than all those West Indians coming over here to rebuild the mother country, as it is often put, their own government bribed them to leave the country by offering to lend them enough to book tickets across the Atlantic. It was not that London transport was so short of staff that they turned in desperation to the West Indies. It was the countries there which were desperate and they asked London transport for help and wanted them to offer jobs to people in Barbados because this would be to the advantage of Barbados rather than Britain. What has happened is that all this has been turned on its head and so now we are taught that it was Britain that needed those immigrants rather than that Barbados was so anxious to be rid of some of its people. 